Hi, Steve here at blessedhopeforever.com. We are in June of 2024. That's where this world, that's where the church has arrived prophetically. So I have a few thoughts that I want to share with you concerning uh, this uh, unique time in which we're all going through here. I don't usually talk about my personal life, but I can't help but think about the times that aboard ship when I was in the Navy, that's been many, many years ago, but they would sound general quarters. Those of you who you know, served aboard a ship in the Navy, you know what I'm talking about. That's uh, the GQ alarm for battle stations uh, general quarters, general quarters, all hands, man your battle stations. And everybody, it doesn't, didn't matter where you were aboard the ship, you would immediately proceed to your assigned GQ station. Now, aboard a ship, you have a starboard side and a port side. And the general rule was, you know, since you're rushing to get to your general quarter station, you know, you travel one direction forward on the starboard side. And I believe you, you travel, if I remember right, you travel backwards to aft toward the stern of the ship on the port side. That way sailors aren't bumping into each other. I can clearly remember a number of times in which that happened. You'd be going up a ladder way, uh, down a ladder way, you'd be running through a passageway and you would, if you, if you didn't, if, if for some reason, even if you obeyed the, the general rule of starboard forward and port side aft, sometimes you'd bump into each other. Now, I mention that because this is what we do, generally speaking. We humans, we sometimes we bump into each other. And when we, uh, an alarm sounds, we bump into each other in trying to get to where we're going. There's usually that results, that collision results in a chaos that's it's temporary which is later followed by a situation in which things are how they should be. You're at your general quarter station and everything is fine. Or you bump into someone on the street, you, you know, it's, it's chaotic, you know, the, the collision, but you apologize and you move on. And uh, usually things are better after that. Now, I use that simple analogy between two objects colliding to try to bring into the context of our Lord's return for His church, the age in which we're living, the age of grace, the dispensation of grace. The word dispensation, I'll, I'll talk about that. It, the word in, in the Greek, it, it means to manage one's household. And I'll talk about that. But you could use the word age. You're, you're absolutely allowed to use the word age you know, as a synonym for dispensation. It's a period of time in which God is dealing with His people in a specific way. And as I've suggested, I believe, as many do, we are approaching the end of the age. Uh, in my lifetime, I can't believe, I cannot believe the decline in overall in morality, uh, morality in general. I am 67. Those of you who are my age or older, you can relate to this. Some of you who are younger can, can just remember just 20 years ago when things were so much different than they are today. Uh, there was more concern for others. Uh, 
church attendance was not as low as it is now. That's another uh, indicator, I believe, that we are living in uh, nearing that those days of complete total apostasy. We know that there's been a sharp increase in uh, immorality. I don't think anybody could argue that unless unless you didn't understand the definition of immorality. And there's also been a sharp rise, a dramatically sharp rise in anti-Semitism just in the past few years, and especially the past few months. It just seems like to be a snowball rolling downhill. It's getting gradually more intense, kind of like the birth pangs, you know, of, of a woman in travail, in labor. If you're of the Christian persuasion, if you look at everything, if you filter your environment, your world, your, uh, your life through that filter of, of Christian eschatology, Bible prophecy, you, you don't believe that this is going to get better. You, you believe it's going to get worse because that's exactly what we read happens. Things are not going to go back to normal. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Uh, I see scandals today like I have never saw before. I see weather today like I have never saw before. The lies, the deception, the corruption, wars, rumors of wars, unlike anything I've seen in my lifetime. Sometimes I wonder why I would even bother making a video trying to persuade people that we are nearing the end of the age when it is so blatantly obvious that we are. I'm not usually comfortable just talking to you without a narrative, without, without you know, some sort of an outline, uh, some sort of a a guideline to, to guide me through the uh, extreme risk of which I take constantly of telling you folks how I feel about something knowing that what I could say could not be the truth. But there is little doubt in my mind that what I'm about to tell you is the truth. Sometimes I think we need to think outside the box. I've mentioned this before. I made videos on that. I'm the kind of person that, that really does a lot of thinking. I'm, a, I'm a, just a, by nature, I'm just kind of a thinking individual. I'm not, a, a, I'm not like a lot of people. I'm not like a zombie, you know, that just kind of doesn't uh, think about much, except, you know, maybe the, where the next, you know, bit of excitement is going to, uh, when the next bit of excitement is going to occur in my life. It's, uh, believe me, I don't live a very exciting life. I do love what I do, and, and to me, I treasure the opportunity that God's given me to talk to you folks. And I guess before I go any further, this is probably a good time to thank every one of you for all of your support, all of your interest, your devotion to this channel. It means a whole lot to, to Sue and I. It will, it will always forever mean more than I can say to you folks. There is no doubt in my mind, and it shouldn't be in yours, that in these final hours before our Lord's return, there has definitely been a resurgence of interest in last day's prophecy, and that is, that is unprecedented in any generation that has preceded us. I believe, and I'm going to throw this out there for your thinking, I hope that you spend some time at least thinking about it. I, th I find it interesting. I've, I've always been a, uh, the type uh, Bible teacher who, who tries to put things in, a, in the right perspective. I believe we are nearing the end of the age, and I think it's important to consider, at least consider, that what we are experiencing right now, all of us, is a, a collision between 
two important dispensations or ages, the age of, of grace, the dispensation of the, the church, the, the Gentiles, before God removes the church and turns His attention once again back to redeeming His people, Israel, delivering, His delivering, I should say, His people, Israel. I've always looked at the tribulation as sort of a parenthesis in God's program and, and dealing with, with mankind. Uh, with every dispensational change, there's been a number of them throughout human history. With every dispensational change or transition, there's been dramatic change every time, every single time. There has been, and most uh, Bible students understand that there's been seven major dispensations. There's, there's minor ones, but you know we look at the major dispensations. There was the age of innocence before the fall. God dealt with man in a certain particular way at that time. After the fall, He no longer dealt with man that, that particular way. So it, the, the word, and I'll get to that word, dispensation. We'll talk about the meaning of the word, but there was the age of innocence and then there was the early child. The, this is how I look at it as, as a Bible teacher for over 35 years. There was the early childhood then after the fall. I, I look at that as early childhood, which ended in the flood. The great deluge. Noah's, Noah's flood. And then there went, after the flood, it, it went to childhood. There was a new beginning after the flood at childhood, uh, which ended then in Moses. That dispensation ended in Moses' ministry, the ministry of Moses. The law, uh, the Torah given God's people on Mount Sinai. I believe boyhood ended in Malachi. I believe youth, if you, if you look at th this from the perspective of a, a growing creature, an individual who goes through the stages of development like, like the years of prophecy has and human history has, youth ended in Christ, uh, uh, manhood, uh, that, that's most of the church. And then there's old age, human decay, meaning the last hour of the church. That's where I believe we're at. I don't... Uh, I'm more inclined to say that because of, well, other various reasons. But then you have that tribulation period as a parenthesis. And then you have the restoration of all things. That's the millennium. That's the thousand year reign of Christ on earth. After He returns at the second coming, after the seven year tribulation period. Now that word dispensation, it's a Strong's Greek 3622. Oikonomia it is, uh, the word literally means stewardship, administration, uh, management of household affairs, uh, how God manages His household. We are living in the dispensation of grace. Much of the problem that Christians have today in their walk with the Lord, in their attempt to walk in the freedom that God has given us in Christ and the, uh, experiencing the peace and the joy and the rest of knowing the Lord, that there's no condemnation, that we're not under law, but we're under grace. Uh, many of them fail to really understand that this is more than just true. It's, it's how God is managing His household during this present age. 
to live in a way that's contrary or different than how God is managing his household. That, that, would, be, that would be you being a believer who's under grace living under law. Now, I find this interesting. You know, what, I already gave you the illustration of me bumping into other shipmates in the Navy, and, which resulted in chaos, which then uh, f was followed by uh, a certain degree of order, which was we were at our general quarters station, and, and uh, we weren't bumping into each other, and we were, you know, uh, getting business done. And it seems to be a universal rule I've, I've given a lot of thought to this the past several days. The same thing occurs when a male and a female collide. I put that in quotes. I don't, I don't mean anything against, you know, you know. I'm not. I'm not trying to say anything negative against, you know, our our species, male and female coming together and and. Uh, procreating or anything else, but when a male and a female merge, something new is born out of it normally. Normally, I mean, at least that's the intention, you know. Uh, be fruitful, go forth, be fruitful and multiply, said the Lord. So, I mean, you know, it's a... So when a male and a female merge, you have the same identical principle in effect. It's, there's chaos... You could look at that as childbirth, and then something new is born out of it. I believe we are living in at a period of time in which two dispensations, two ages are merging. They're colliding in a sense. There's and there's going to be chaos, and it shouldn't surprise us at all that there it, there is. And and uh, even though we haven't transitioned over, the church is still here, and we haven't been removed, and we haven't been transitioned over into. Uh, our new new life experience post rapture with him in glory in the clouds you know in heaven even though that hasn't occurred yet we are living in a time in which these two ages are colliding that's what i'm suggesting when when god identifies with man or i should say man becomes identified with christ it's it's something that god did it's not something that man does he, we have been identified with christ in his death burial and resurrection but when that happens and and man becomes identified with christ there's a an abrupt life change uh i, I wouldn't say it's chaotic there's any, nothing you know it, Except in the sense that you're, in a, in a very real sense, if you were to be honest, even though as glorious as that new birth is, that comes out of that encounter with Christ and being identified into Christ, baptized into the body of Christ, there is, in a, to, in a, to a certain extent, there is a degree of chaos that is involved in that because it uproots you from what your former life and it prepares you for a, a new one. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's, that's also included in this general rule that I'm suggesting here. When stu two stars collide, we know what happens. Same thing, chaos. But something new is born out of it. When two worlds collide, a material is flung into, into orbit, uh, quickly coalescing into a single object, uh, and something new is born out of it. Many think that's how our moon was created. That God, how God created our moon. What I find really interesting is just not too many years ago, Hubble uh, saw two colliding galaxies. It was a big deal. They'd never seen that before. Now, as you know, I don't believe in accidents. I don't believe in coincidences. I, I think God intended us to see a collision of two galaxies. I think that's what's happening right now on the spiritual plane. We see the collision of galaxies, two galaxies, two entirely different universes. It is a conflict we know between good and evil in which Christ is, is, is already the victor and we triumph, are always caused to triumph in Christ. We are victorious 
Victory is not something we achieve on a human level. Victory came through the cross. We are victorious. We're more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So whether we're talking about stars or galaxies or universes, when two of these fallen universe, uh, you know, universes collide, it produces chaos. Uh, the, the two begin to react violently when they collide. Eventually, the galaxies will fully merge to form a single stable galaxy. So you see there's chaos and then there's new birth. They say our own galaxy, the Milky Way, will uh, at some point, many millions of years in the future, undergo a similar collision uh, as they saw through Hubble. And with our nearest galactic neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy, the Milky Way and the Andromeda, well, you know, it's not expected to happen for around four billion years. I'm going to say it, it will never happen because we don't have that much time. But I believe God gave us all of this to think about. The consequences in a galaxy a collision, large galaxies absorb smaller galaxies entirely, tearing them apart and incorporating their stars. But when the galaxies are similar in size like the Milky Way and Andromeda, then the close encounter destroys the spiral structure entirely. I believe two dispensations or ages are colliding, resulting in abnormal chaos. It explains everything that we see going on. I think that it is probably one of the one of the strongest indicators, if not the strongest indicators, that we are in fact living in the end times. I'm going to put this out. I'm going to stand on that. That's my opinion. You don't have to agree. It's just something for you to think about. We know the we're well aware of the conflict between good and evil, the clash, the collision between good and evil. You know, and we're living in an age in which uh, good is called evil and evil is called good. It's the upside down, reverse, put the cart before the horse sort of thing. Same, same with modern Christianity when it comes to the believer's walk. You know, we put the cart before the horse, saying man has to do something for God to do something, which is not biblical at all. But it, this conflict between good and evil, it goes all the way back to the beginning Little wonder it's going to manifest itself in the end in an unprecedented way. It shouldn't surprise us at all. And if we're believers, if, we, if, our, if our heart is sincere and our love for the Lord, because we, we know we love Him because He first loved us, we shouldn't have any worries at all. We are told to give thanks in all things, for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. It's God's will that we give thanks in all things. Not some things, but all things. Dearly beloved, I am at this point in my life, in my spiritual growth, in my relationship with this uh, uh, this ministry uh, and you and and just you know everything else i am i am absolutely despite the comfort and the joy that i receive moment by moment by an all loving god who loved me and gave himself for me in which i stand before him holy bl unblameable and unreprovable in his sight i am grieved grieved over the ungodliness of my species, and I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed of my species. Now, of course, I could also argue to you that there are only two species of human beings on earth. Okay? Uh, there's not one. There's not one. We're all, it's not, well, we're just all one happy, big, happy family. It's, you know, we're all the, we're all God's children. That is not true. I believe we are the aliens. I'm not saying that there aren't demonic 
apparitions, manifestations that are not alien. I do not believe in aliens from other worlds. I believe every, all of that stuff that we see, that they talk about, I mean, and there's tons of it, that, and it seems to be so directed toward there being some alien race on some other planet in which, well, if that were true, now we have some real serious theological problems as far as Scripture is concerned, Christ's death is concerned. I mean, what did He do? Did He, was, did he go to that planet and die on a cross for their sins? I believe it's demonic. I, most Christians do. I, I think even the paranormal ghost uh, manifestations, apparitions, they are so similar. These orbs, you know, these ghosts, so-called ghosts, disembodied humans, you know, coming back to, you know, which is totally not biblical. You know, this, uh, there's so, such a similarity between these, the way that they interact, the way that they move, the way that they function, their characteristics, their, the way that they look, the way that they, you know, it's, with UFOs, you know, I think there's a connection and I think it's all demonic, but that's, that's another video. But I am absolutely grieved over the ungodliness of my nation, of, of, my, of my species, even though I believe that, uh, that uh, we are not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. I am absolutely appalled at how creation the created order, uh, God's created beings, uh, creatures in general, hate its creator. Hate they hate they hate its creator. They hate God. It's it's always boggled my mind how that the creature could hate the creator. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's for also for another video. I, I think most Americans are in a hypnotic trance. Now, I'm going to say that when two ages merge, like what I believe we're seeing now, there's always chaos followed by new birth. I try to stay away from much of all the uh, other, you know, I, I don't think politics should be taught from a pulpit. I just don't. There, there's, there's enough videos out there, people doing that, that's, that will inform you as to what's going on. But I, I can't help but bring some of it into it from an eschatological perspective. It's, you know, uh, my personal feelings is we have no uh, intrinsic conflict with Russia or China or North Korea or, or, I, or you know. Uh, the Russians are absolutely 100% politically united in, in, in what they're doing in Ukraine. You know, you, they, they look at Ukraine as a red line. Uh, never mind the fact we started that. That's, that's a... That could be another video. You'll never hear me talk about that. But that's we're now in a hot war with Russia. I, I when I served in the Navy, I was I went through the Cold War. Uh, I mean, Russian ships we, we'd see them out on the horizon. They only had one aircraft carrier, and that was the Kiev at that time, which is interesting. That's the you know, the Kiev, that, that should remind you of Ukraine. That's, but that was, uh, uh, I don't know how many carriers we had at that time, but we, our Navy had built up to a point where the Russians were no match for us. I mean, sure, the nuclear threat was, was, was very real, and it was, it was a mutual assured destruction uh, policy and all that, but as, as far as if you kept nuclear weapons out of it, we, I believe we could have, beat the Russians hands down. I think we started the Ukraine war. A lot of people do. Uh, it, they, right now, Ukraine has lost the war. Uh, 
if you talk to the experts, Ukraine's done for. They, they don't even have the uh, enough people to recruit into the military to continue this conflict. Uh, Zelensky is no longer the constitutional president. He wrote his last executive order uh, uh, or right after he wrote his last executive order concerning policies in Ukraine. The uh, election, uh, his term had run out. He's, he's actually not a constitutionally elected president right now. It's, but that's also for someone else to talk about. We, we were given two eclipses, 2017, 2024. Uh, and we've seen what's happened. We, before the 2024 eclipse, after the, the first one in 2017, as we moved through the years toward the one in 2024, we could clearly see the, the decline of America in, as it concerns a great number of categories. Uh, I don't believe this is by accident. Uh, as far as us uh, assisting Ukraine, trying to pour money into a down a bottomless well, you know, of, of to, to try to save Ukraine. Uh, it's, I, I just, you know, how would the U.S. feel if China had military bases along the Rio Grande? I have never been a big fan of Putin. I mean, I'm, I'm no fan of communism, Marxism, or any socialism, or any those other things. But folks, right is right and wrong is wrong. And I, I'm not trying to, to persuade anybody concerning any political ideology whatsoever. I'm, I'm, my, my interest is, is in looking, it's always been in looking how that all of this factors into end days prophecy. I think that our present uh, administration, the Democratic administration, they believe that they must remain in power at all costs, all costs, given where we're at, given what they've done. Uh, and uh, changing what was used to be, I believe, one of the greatest countries on earth into what it is now, they have to remain in power at all costs. Uh, I, th I think NATO, Europe has gone plumb insane. I think uh, Trump would try to end this threat if he was reelected. Not sure he would succeed. This great sharp, I mean, sharp, sharp rise in anti-Semitism is, is unprecedented. Uh, the, the war with Israel and Hamas, it, it appears to be coming to, a, a, to a, a, an end. Uh, uh, at least uh, in, in one phase of it, but uh, folks, it'll never be over. You know, uh, we Christ, as Christians know that this is not going to be over, whereas our leaders, well, they have their heads stuck in the sand and they think that there's some possible way of salvag salvaging the, all of this. We know that's not true. For the child of God, it would be uh, awfully strange if this age closing experience wasn't life changing because that is exactly what it is. I don't think that if, you, if you've watched this channel since 2017 and, and you followed all these things, or if you haven't watched this channel, if you're just, you just stumbled onto this channel and you've seen all of the things that have occurred, I think you would have to admit that, that your life has, if, if you truly love the Lord, I think your life has undergone a dramatic change just in the past seven years. This doomsday clock. I did. I did a video on that here not too long ago. It's it's been you know it's been tracking Armageddon since 1947. Really, I mean, since 1947. Do you not find it the least bit intriguing that 
the doomsday clock that they've been tracking this since just about the same time that Israel became a nation again. Well, now you could say, well, Steve, that's, it's a, this is a result of the Second World War and us dropping atomic bombs on Japan and, and the Cold War with Russia and Russia uh, obtaining that nuclear technology. And now we, you know, it's a, a race you know, between uh, the U.S. And, and Russia on arms race and and it, it just, well, that's the timing. It all, you know, it's, it was a result of World War II, but, but, but folks think back during World War II and what happened very significantly, very something that occurred during that period in which was, is extremely, I think, uh, worthy of note uh, prophetically, and that was the Holocaust. Even, even uh, the, this resurgence in, in UFO, uh, UAP uh, activity, it really ramped up in the 40s. There are, uh, honest to God, reports of, of these uh, unidentified aerial phenomena flying over our nuclear missile sites and shutting them down. Now, maybe you've heard this, maybe you haven't, but NATO is basically at war with Russia. Uh, you know, it's, it's some of the missiles that, that, that we sent to Ukraine or in our, our participation in this getting into a hot war with Russia, we've, we have attacked Russian nuclear early warning sites. Are you kidding me? Folks, this is the Cuban Missile Crisis on steroids, if, if you're old enough to remember that. Just a few days ago, a week or so ago, Trump is convicted on, uh, uh, I don't know how many, what, 43 charges? Found guilty, convicted. He's convicted. This, this man who, in whom sevens have dogged his heels, this man has been followed by sevens in a phenomenal way ever since 2017. We started looking at that. He's convicted first president in U.S. history, convicted. My own personal beliefs is, is he's innocent. He's, but it's, he's being railroaded, but for political purposes. But he's convicted at what age? This was, I believe, uh, March 30th that he was convicted. How old was he then on March 30th? 77. Not 76, not 78. Now, granted, he's going to be 78 June 14, but he's convicted at 77. And this is after all those sevens have, have dogged his heels. Many have traced down the, the eclipse date of Nineveh, the Nineveh eclipse. Uh, June 15, 763 B.C. Let me say that again. June 15, 763 B.C. BC, according to the charts, that was when that, that was the eclipse. Yeah. June 15. Now, Trump was born June 14. June 14 is U.S. Flag Day. June 14, as I pointed out in, in an earlier video, was Judah's birthday, the founder of Israel. June 14. So within a 24-hour period of this, Nineveh eclipse is Trump's birthday, Flag Day, and the birth of Judah. Uh, 2017 to 2024, where we're at right at the present time, seven years. I think we're at the uh, seven-month mark as far as the war with Hamas is, is, is concerned, if there's, a, 
if there's a ceasefire, which I think they're working on, or maybe they have done that already. Uh, uh, no, I think the attention is turned to north to Hezbollah. The, but October 7 to, uh, to just here a few days ago when I read that they were uh, trying to come to some agreement, some peace agreement, that Israel had actually agreed uh, to this ceasefire, or Hamas in Israel had agreed on this, seven months. I, there's so many things about the number seven here, I, I could just do, I could talk all day on it. Yeah, these migrants, uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call them. There's a lot of things that people call them, uh, invaders, uh, migrants, uh, refugees, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, but these migrants being brought in to the United States to ensure that the powers that be remain in power and you're paying for it. Our government uh, actually destroying their records. This has already been revealed, it's already been uh, uncovered that they're actively involved in trying to find their records, destroy their records, so that when they commit domestic terrorism, it can't be tracked back to them. I turned on the news this morning, Trump's talking about uh, some executive actions on the border. Uh, too little, too late. It's all, we know it's all political. The corruption runs deep. These two ages are colliding. If you, want to, if you want to call it the, uh, the end of the age of grace and the beginning of the tribulation period, I don't look at the tribulation period as a, as a, as a, a, a dispensation of God, even though it's, it's not technically, theologically speaking, it's, it's you know, in, in, in most scholarly uh, circles or conversations, it's not considered a dispensation. But the thousand year reign of Christ is. The return of Christ and the followed by the thousand year reign of Christ. I think that they want civil war in the US. I've never seen uh, the hatred among Jews and Christians as I've seen, as I am seeing now. They're releasing terrorists into the country, into the US, even inducting them into our military. We are in, without question living in perilous times. I think that part of BHF's mission, and believe me, we, we have a mission. We're not here just really to talk about anything and everything or just whatever can get the views and, and that sort of thing. Uh, the primary mission of BHF is to encourage God's people with God's love and hope and His near return and uh, to speak the truth in love concerning what He has said about us, which is uh, not anywhere near what modern Christianity would, would have you believe. Modern Christianity today, I, I, I believe we're living in an age of apostasy, of falling away from the faith. This could precede the, the coming of the Antichrist. Uh, it's, a, it's a serious falling away from the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. What is that faith? Well, it is the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. It's not your faith. It's not talking about your faith failing. It's talking about a departure from the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. I, I think that we have been experiencing this for generations. I, I've always suggested that the wheels of prophecy turn slowly. I beg you folks to, to stay focused in the Word, keep looking up, rest in Him. We're running out of time. Whether He returns in our lifetime or not, He's running out of time in your life. Give God the credit that He's due. Stop arguing against the truth. Stop allowing your feelings to dictate your every move rather than your faith in God. Look, I love you all. I truly do. 
Join us on Sunday in Galatians. Until then, thanks for watching.